Hello, and welcome back to another Teen Titans Go! episode review. So, this week's two episodes... Gorilla, and you're fired. Okay, let's start out with the first episode, Gorilla. Now, this episode consists of pure hell for Robin fans. I mean, seriously, it's just crazy. Okay, so it starts off with all the Titans, well, not all the Titans, but Cyborg and the girls doing jumping jacks. And Robin watching them, like, criticizing their jumping jacks. Like, Cyborg, blah, 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 blah. He said something to each of them. I forget what he said to Cyborg. He said, work on that form, Raven. And then when he got to Starfire, um, he said, go faster. And she said, if I go any faster, I might rupture the space-time continuum. I don't have, I don't have any freaking idea what that has to do with anything, but he screams, NO EXCUSES! She goes faster and goes through some sort of portal. You see, that's what I was referencing in my original Teen Titans Go rant. Star, or excuse me, Robin would rather have the space-time continuum be ruptured than Starfire slow, do slow jumping jacks. Why? Because he's a big, fat jerk in this episode. I mean, in the original show, sure, Robin could be a bit of a bossy control freak from time to time, but he didn't treat the other Titans like slaves like he does in this episode, and you'll see more what I mean as we get further into this episode. Less one thing out of character for Robin, I guess one thing out of character for Starfire, because I don't necessarily think that she would have that much power. That's more of Raven having that sort of power. Anywho, so... <clears throat> Then Beast Boy comes in as a gorilla, breaks the elevator door, and declares, because he's the big alpha or whatever, that he's the new leader, and apparently it works. I haven't seen this episode in a while because I hate this episode, um, so I'll try to remember it best I can. So some stuff happens, and since Beast Boy is the new leader now, he does whatever he wants with the Titans. Like, they do whatever he does, so... Like... They defend the monkey bars, like, this girl walked up to the monkey bars, and all the titans, like, got ready to, like, annihilate her, and she ran away screaming. I mean, Robin was just standing there, like, still petrified that Beast Boy overthrew him from the leader's chair, but still, um, it was still uh, just kind of weird how, I mean, sure, the titans would never do that for real, but they're just acting like robot slaves to the leader, and that's sort of how it is, like a dictator. That's sort of how it is when you have a dictator. Okay, so anyway, so, um, after a while, Beast Boy turns the Titan's Tower into an animal zone, and him, Starfire, and Raven are all acting like a monk bunch of monkeys. In the meantime, at the zoo, Cyborg is training Robin to, you know, be the alpha, like, you know, the leader, or whatever. So he, like, gives him all this, this diligent advice, and frankly, I didn't know that this new cyborg could actually know all this stuff about how to be leader. So after a while, Robin is finished training, goes back to fight Beast Boy, and tickles him with a feather, and he laughs his head off and wins. So yeah, so not really that much to talk about this episode, but I really don't like this episode. I mean, I hate the fact that Robin bosses around the other Titans and sleep, treats them like slaves. So the episode ends with, um, Robin saying to Beast or this is like the last part. So Robin says to Beast Boy, go get me a sandwich. And he says, yes, sir, and goes off. Yeah, so apparently the Titans have to call him sir. Oh, and one more thing, um, back at the jumping jacks part, before Beast Boy came, um, he said, now that we're done doing jumping jacks, we need to do 500 jump squats. I don't even know what a jump squat is, frankly. We've never really done them in gym class, so I, frankly, I have no freaking clue what they are. If you know, you can leave them in the comments below. Anywho, um... And Raven says, and by we, we mean, you mean everybody except you. And he says, yeah, blah, 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 I'm willing to make that sacrifice. Frankly, if there was an antonym for the word sacrifice, that is what he would be doing. Now, there might be an antonym for the word sacrifice somewhere out there, but none that I'm aware of. So, 
that's what Robin will be doing. He will make, be making quite the opposite of a sacrifice. Anyway, so, um, back to the end of the episode. So then he screams and Starfire and Raven's faces saying, If I blah blah blah, I don't remember what he says, but he says blah blah blah, and they're like, Yes, sir! Or something. They don't salute him, but and he's like, It's good to be the Alpha. <sighs> My god, Robin. Seriously. Any Teen Titans fan, even if you're not a Teen, Tit Teen Titans fan, like, just to, I'm assuming about 95, I mean, this is just my random guess, but it's probably accurate. I'm assuming about 95% of the people who watch this episode, regardless to whether they are aware of the original show or not, or they're totally in love with the original show, whether they know there was a previous show, they love the previous show, or they have no freaking clue that there was ever a previous show, ever. You probably want to just go right in there and slap him. Just slap him on the face and just punch him repeatedly. Because I wanted to do that. I wanted to counterattack him with his own staff. Anyway, enough about this episode. I need to get going here. I spent a lot of... I spent a little too much time on that episode. Next episode, you're fired. Okay, I'll skim through this episode somewhat quickly. Okay. Um, so, it starts off with the Titans on a battlefield in some other planet. And the Titans go, a Beast Boy is trying to, uh, decide what to turn into. And he's like, no, not this, not this, not this. And then Raven suggests a pterodactyl, and he's like, nah, I was a pterodactyl last week. And then he finally decides what he's gonna turn into right when the Titans lose the battle. Back at Titans Tower, all the Titans are really annoyed with him for, like, letting them down like that. <clears throat> so, Robin says, you're getting fired because of our human resources, and he's like, we have human resources? But anyway, so Beast Boy gets fired, um, Cyborg is, like, super sad to see him go, Robin and, his, and Starfire are a little bit sad, and obviously Raven doesn't even care, she's probably gonna, like, throw a party secretly, and cry at the same time. She's probably gonna be, like, being like, yay, but also aw, or I don't know, never mind that. So, um, so, they hold auditions for a new Titan. And they go through tons and tons of rejects, like reject, reject, reject. And then they finally come up with two that are the Wonder Twins. Um, so one of them turns into animals, and the other one turns into liquids and solids, like ice, gasoline, and water, like stuff like that. Anyway, so, um... So they say that one of them got the job, but it's either all or nothing with them because they need their need each other to activate their powers. So, um, so the useless one they use, or the one that turns into liquids, uh, his name is Zan. Um, they make him the receptionist. Then him and Beast Boy team up to get uh, her sister fired because he hates that receptionist receptionist job so much. But after a while, it doesn't necessarily work out, and Beast Boy comes back to Titan's Tower for some reason. Um, yeah, I'm surprised, like, they didn't just, like, throw him out or something, but anyway, so, um, so, um, so then Starfire says that, uh, uh, the useless Wonder Twin admitted you were behind it all, all of her, uh, all of the other Wonder Twin, um, I don't remember her name, but the other Wonder Twins, you know, mess-ups and blunders within battles, because they, they always, like, tricked her into, like, failing in battle constantly. <sighs> okay, so anyway, um, so, uh, Cyborg is, had taken off his robot feet and has his, you know, human feet. I highly doubt he actually had that underneath him. And he's using Xana's water to soak his feet, or so-called his dogs. Okay, so then Xana's sick of being treated like garbage by the Titans, so he flushes himself down the toilet or something, like goes, becomes one with the toilet water and heads out to the ocean. So Beast Boy decides to go after him. He goes into the toilet as a fish and says, flush me. And Raven says, and a lifelong dream finally comes true. And flushes the toilet with her, um, dark powers. I don't get it. 
What is it? Had been her lifelong dream to flush Beast Boy down the toilet? Or what? Was it just... Why is it? Because, like, I don't get it. Anyway, so after uh, Beast Boy brings Zam back to Titan's Tower, um, the two of them decide to just head out to just be together forever. They hire back Beast Boy, and he gets the new job as the receptionist. Oh, and here's this constant gag. When, uh, Zan was like, he was like, Titan's Tower, Zan speaking. He's like, no, he doesn't work here. You want the Bat Cave. And then they called a Ken, and he's like, no, you want the Bat Cave. The Bat Cave. Obviously, they were, wanted Batman. Then at the end of the episode, Beast Boy is the receptionist saying, yes, this is the Bat Cave, Batman speaking. And the episode ends. Uh, Okay, your fired meh episode. That was a meh episode. Gorilla, that was a that was just a boo episode. There there's a, there's basically just three ratings. There's good, meh, or bleh. And yeah, so those were my ratings for those, basically. Okay, so let's see. Check off those two episodes. So next Monday, I will re be reviewing episodes Super Robin and Tower Power. <sighs> See you then. Peace out.